so I wanted to do this video as a supplement to my previous video where I showed you my daily duties for this experiment. So today is a data collection day, so I'm going to show you what kind of data I'm collecting for this experiment and how I do that. The first thing that I'm measuring is the metabolic rate of the snails, or the breathing rate. And this is important because it can signal whether the snails are physiologically stressed. I do that by using this machine here. Whoops. This machine here, so I'm going to very briefly show you how this works. So this machine measures the oxygen concentration in the water and attached to it is this, which is a fiber optic cable. So there is a light at the end of the cable. You can see, look, when I press this, flashes. Boop, boop. I'm gonna have two data readings on there now. And what I do is I place each of my snails in these oxygen chambers, which are just falcon tubes. Falcon is just the brand of these tubes. And you can see that they have these little pink spots on them. And then, so I put all my snails and they're lined up nicely in the tubes in a temperature controlled uh, bath. Okay, so all you would do is place the fiber optic cable against one of the oxy spots and press the machine, and voila, it records the oxygen concentration on here. These little barcodes are basically attached to each of the spots, each of the chambers, and this little thing has a scanner back here to identify them. So the next thing that I do is to measure the writing time of the snails. So this is the snail's ability to reorientate themselves if they get dislodged and flipped over. And that might sound really weird, like why on earth are you flipping snails? But I will very briefly show you how I do that and then explain why. It is a beautiful day today. Look at that. So I'm just going to demonstrate this in these little containers here. Obviously when I do this for real, I will do them in slightly different and much more controlled conditions. Okay, fill this with water. Take the snail out. We'll place it upside down like this. And then basically I would record how long it takes to emerge from its shell. You can see this one is emerging. And then how long it takes to flip itself over fully. There we go. Got a couple running in case it takes a while. Almost there. Ugh, no. Come on, dude, I've got a whole day. I swear, up close, they look like some out of a horror movie. Yeah, that's why I like them. There it goes. That one's obviously being a bit sneaky because it pulled itself up on the side. That's essentially it. And the last thing that I measured for this experiment is the mortality rates, so the death rates, which is um fun. So for the respiration rate, I would measure that over a given time period using that machine uh, to calculate the respiration rate as a measure of physiological stress that these snails may be exhibiting. Now the writing time, which I know seems like a really weird thing to do, um, the writing time is a measure of any physical stress that the organism may have. So if you think about it, organisms like snails or even sea urchins or things like sea stars which crawl along the bottom of the sea floor, if they get flipped over by anything from waves to predators, if they are unable to flip themselves back over, so if they are unable to right themselves, they would most certainly die because they would be unable to move, unable to feed, and they would be completely vulnerable to predators. So doing measurements like the writing time is a good indicator of whether these species would be able to survive under these conditions. I know you may be thinking, okay, but why do we care? Like, why do we care about snails at all and I know it might be hard to understand like why am I spending so much time researching them and why do other scientists spend so much time and money researching organisms like this um, particularly the snail species I don't think people eat it might be a little bit easier to understand this type of research with organisms like sea urchins which are really popular particularly in this part of the world to eat or things like fish but with species like these snails or smaller more seemingly insignificant species like the microscopic ones that you can't see it may be a little bit harder to understand the point of spending so much time, money and energy researching them. It is generally because within a habitat, each species has its own role, its own specific role that helps to keep the habitat in an equilibrium to keep it stable. However, that is a much longer conversation that I want to save for another video. But for this experiment, that's essentially all of the kind of data collection that I'm doing and I'm now going to get on with my data analysis. Bye!